Good morning once again. How's the family this morning? Y'all may have noticed all the snow melted. <laughs> Not cold enough, is it, to keep that snow going, is it? I know some other parts of the country uh, would disagree with us about it being cold. Uh, it's been a cold year for many of them. And my Bible upside down here. So. Well, as many of you know, today uh, God laid on my heart to bring you a, a message about servanthood. Since we saw all the great servants that this morning, and all the there's many that come go unnoticed here in the church uh, every year. I would say this: we are a serving church and a loving church, and uh, that's revealed to everyone that enters those doors back there at the back. No, in John F. Kennedy's inaugural address on January 20th, 1961, he made a quote that became famous. He said, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. You know, we could change that wording just a little bit. Uh, change the quote where it applies more to God than our country. How about this? My fellow Christians, ask not what God can do for you, but what you can do for God. I think that's what God wants us to do. We know, without a doubt, all the things that God's done for us. It's in His Word and it's in the Bible. And as Christians, we already know this because it is in the Bible. It is His Word. He reveals His promise to us throughout the whole Bible. Not only does he tell us, the Bible tell us what God is doing for us, it reveals what God has already done for us. Here are just a few things through Scripture that God does for us. Now, I know we're going to skip here, so I'm going to go slow so everybody can get there. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Let's go to Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Says, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. James chapter 1, verse 5. Am I going too fast? You just got to lick them fingers and get going, right? That's. <laughs> James chapter five, uh, chapter one, verse five. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Promises of God. One more here. John ten ten. John chapter ten, verse ten. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. God's promises. The promises that he's made and he's been keeping those promises. And what about the greatest thing God did for us? John 3, 16, 17. Many of you know it. We don't even have to go there. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son in the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. What has he done for us? He has served us over and over again, continues to do so. Amen? This is just a few of the things God is doing for us. So the question is, this morning, what are you doing for God? I guess 
you may be thinking right now, okay, what am I doing for God? How should we be serving God with our lives? Because that's how we serve Him, amen? The answer is, we should be serving God with everything we do in our lives. That we should be a reflection of Him through our life to others, amen? amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. We're going to look at a lot of scripture this morning, but we're moving pretty fast. So I know it's, we don't have to hurry out and watch the Cowboys play anymore. So I knew Denise would like to hear that, didn't y'all? <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Okay, always. It doesn't say sometimes, it says always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. The rewards are astronomical. Many people here this morning can witness how serving the Lord in one way or another has benefited their life and changed their life. Everyone should serve the Lord. Not just me, not just these elders or these leaders. Everyone should serve, serve, serve the Lord. You don't need to be a preacher or a pastor. You don't have to be in leadership in a church. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. You just need to serve the Lord with your life using the gifts and talents that God has given you. First Samuel. I don't even know where it's at. I don't even know the numbers. That's terrible. Okay, I'm just going to read it. <laughs> Obey the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Remember the great things he has done for you. It says, obey and serve the Lord faithfully with all your heart. First Samuel, I, normally I put the numbers down. I didn't do that, so forgive me. Y'all go find it. <laughs> that means you got to look through your Bible, right? <laughs> you got to open it. And as I've mentioned, we have so many servants right here in this church. It, it is remarkable. If we look at just a few, look at Clint and Rose Sparks. They serve the Lord by sitting on their horses, greeting and waving to everyone that drives by or into this church parking lot. How simple can you get, right? Believe it or not, that is a ministry serving the Lord. Very, 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 very simple. God's not trying to make it complicated. He's after your heart. Each band member that you see up here every Sunday serves the Lord by playing music that opens our hearts and gets us excited at the service on Sunday morning, gets us ready for the message, right? And as I've said before, these guys could go play anywhere. We have a good band, would you not say? I think we have a great band. But they could go play anywhere, but they choose to serve the Lord here on Sunday morning. We are so thankful for them. And we have men that serve the Lord with just a smile, saying good morning, while opening the doors right up here at the front of the church. Simple thing. You think that's, that's serving. That is something that means a lot to people that walk into this church every Sunday. The simple smile, the handshake, and the welcoming they do just standing in those front doors, welcoming people in. That's serving. Tammy uh, and Marlene right here, they serve the Lord by sitting at the children's church entry doors, greeting and signing in the kids on Sunday morning. Simple serving. So everyone can serve. There's a place for everyone and something for people to do all over this church as servants. I could go on and on about all the servants here in the church. But my point is that everyone can serve the Lord in some way. So don't think you're not capable of being a servant for the Lord. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 I like this piece of scripture, and I believe you will also. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Colossians 
Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. Love that piece of scripture. Because if you do it that way, you will not fail. I've told this story before, and when I, when I read this piece of scripture, it reminds me of a gentleman that I've mentioned before. His name is Tommy Peterman. At one time, he worked as a greeter for Walmart in Waxahachie. Some of you may have ran into him from time to time. If you, if you ever went through those Walmart doors and he was there, you know who Tommy Peterman was because he would just yell it out, Welcome to Walmart, just blow you away. And I mean, he was a little short guy and stocky and he had that bellow voice and you knew you were at Walmart and you were welcome. And when you left, he would say the same thing. Thank you for shopping at Walmart. Come back, the whole deal. He would blow you away. He loved it. I sat and watched him one day over and over again do that. And some people looked at him like he was a nut. You know, who is this guy, you know? And then some people got really excited, as I did. I thought that's great that somebody would do that. So I watched him for a while, and when I went over and talked to him, shook his hand, and said, Tommy, man, I love what you do. I said, but you have those people that walk through here, they act like you're a nut. You know, they don't want any part of that. He goes, I ain't doing it for them. He said, I'm doing it for the Lord. This was a guy that was a truck driver his whole life. You know, drove all over the country. But he loved the Lord. And he loved sharing with people. That was such a servant's heart. And that's the way we should be in our lives every day. Do everything as we were doing it for the Lord. He will bless you for that. You know, God expects us to serve. He provides us with evidence throughout the Bible that confirms that he wants us to serve him. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. This piece of scripture is true in every organization, every Christian organization, every church. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. God wants us to get out there and do our job. There's not enough of us. This is a big old world, and he needs us out doing what we do, shining our light of him on everybody else. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Your boy Reggie, all he did was go through the Bible this, this week and he picked out a lot of scripture. I know you're turning a lot. Here's a command. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. He wants you to serve. He wants you to reach outside these walls and reach others. Go and make disciples. He didn't say, Reggie, go and make disciples. He says, go and make disciples. He's talking to all of us, Amen. You're as capable as I am, amen? To be a servant of Christ is to seek his will in all things. Our primary desire every day as servants of Christ is to honor and glorify him with our lives. I pray that we're doing that today. I know many do. True and sincere service for the Lord is done by people who holds no self-agenda. You have to remember that, and you have to look at that. When, when you're speaking with people or people are sharing with you, they should do that with no self-agenda. The agenda should be for the Lord. A servant of Christ is one who has voluntarily set aside his or her personal rights in order to love, serve, and obey the will of God. You know, you got to go back and evaluate yourself and say, man, am I doing that kind of stuff? Am I really all in? I think we've done that, Buster, when we baptize. Are you all in? But you can't. God doesn't want you part the way in. He wants you all in. 
There is no room for self-righteous service with God. No room at all. Self-righteous service comes through human effort. True service comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Self-righteous service is impressed with the big deal. True service finds it almost impossible to distinguish the small from the large service. doesn't matter how large your service is. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about God above. Amen? Self-righteous service requires external rewards. True service hides within the heart. Rather, sometimes people that serve want everybody to know they're serving. If they give, they want everyone to know they're giving. God says that's not the way it works. If you have to do that, you're serving for the wrong reasons. God has specific jobs for each of us according to the gifts and opportunities he provides. And you say, what does that mean? Well, not everyone can serve physically because that's kind of tough. Now, everyone can be in prayer. Everyone can speak a kind word, you know, those kind of things. But some people do it in other ways. They have had opportunities come to them where they can financially give. They can, they can lead ministries in other ways. There's so many other ways to serve. But don't not serve at all. Because you're missing the blessing of God if you are not serving God. Amen? I pray today that we're all serving God, not because we're required to, but because we desire to. Amen? Mark chapter 10, verse 45. We're going to wrap it up right here. Mark chapter 10, verse 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Many of you will remember where Jesus washed his disciples' feet. He put himself as low as he could get so they would know that his will is for them to humble themselves and serve others for God. That's where we need to be. Jesus came to this world to serve us. And we should be willing to do the same for him, for all he's done for us. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we come to you today and we lift this day to you. Father, we are just so thankful. Father, we know another year has gone by and you've been with us through it all. Father, we pray that you continue to lead us, that we stand behind you and follow you wherever it is you'll take us in this church. Father, we thank you uh, so much for all the servants here at this church for their love that they have for one another, for this family feeling that we get every time we walk in here. Father, we are just so thankful for these sermons. And Father, we thank you for your presence and your guidance that, that in your word teaches us how to serve and do it in the right way. Father, I pray today that each and every one of us are revealing you through our lives, our daily lives, and everything we do. And Father, that we would continue to do so. Father, we do pray for the future. We know you've got something good going on there and you're ready to lead us in a direction that will uh, just increase your kingdom. So Father, use us as you will. Allow us to be in the servanthood of you. And Father, we thank you for that opportunity. Father, we love you, we praise you. We just pray that everything we did, everything we said here today was uplifting, glorifying, and pleasing to you. We ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.